everyone and welcome back to Willow's Notes. In today's video, we will review the difference between starch and cellulose. Let's start with glucose. Glucose is a monomer. It's a monosaccharide. Mono meaning one, saccar meaning sugar. Monosaccharide, a sugar made of one unit. And because it's a monomer, it's the building block for bigger sugars like starch and cellulose. It's a six carbon sugar. This is carbon number one, two, three, four, five, and carbon number six is outside the ring. Carbons number two and three also have a hydrogen and hydroxyl group, but for now we only care about carbons number one and four. Carbon number six is also important for branching. This is an alpha glucose and this is a beta glucose. They are isomers called anomers. The only difference between them is the orientation of the hydroxyl group on carbon number one. In alpha glucose, the hydroxyl group is positioned below the plane of the ring, whereas in beta glucose, it is positioned above the plane of the ring. And this little difference will lead to major differences once they form polymers. To form a disaccharide, meaning sugar made of two units, we need two monomers. If two alpha glucose molecules condense, they will form maltose. Carbon number one is facing carbon number four of another glucose molecule. And this faces the two hydroxyl groups towards each other. The hydrogen and the hydroxyl group will condense with one another, forming water, linking the two sugars together. And the bond is called glycosidic linkage. To be exact, we call this an alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage. Why? Because carbon number one has bonded to carbon number four of the next sugar, and the type of sugar is alpha, hence alpha 1,4 glycosidic linkage. And here is the condensation reaction in action, the two monomers condense, water is released, and a glycosidic bond is formed. Polysaccharides are polymers of sugars. The polymers of alpha glucose are starch, that function as food storage in plants, and glycogen, which is the sugar storage in animals. All the glycosidic bonds are facing downwards. And once the polymer is large enough, it takes a helical shape. So remember, with alpha glucose, the polymers are not straight, they are helical in structure. Starch is composed of amylose and amylopactin. Amylose is unbranched, amylopactin is branched. Glycogen is branched as well, but way more than amylopactin. What about polymers with beta glucose? In the case of beta glucose, if you place them next to each other, the hydroxyl group of carbon number one is not facing the hydroxyl group of the carbon number four on the next glucose molecule. For the formation of glycosidic bonds, the two hydroxyl groups have to be facing each other. I'm going to select this glucose molecule and flip it vertically 180 degrees. And by doing that, you can see that now the two hydroxyl groups are facing each other. And that's why in beta-glucose polymers, every other glucose molecule is rotated 180 degrees. Now that they are properly placed, they condense and form cellulose. And note how the glycosidic bonds in cellulose alternate in direction upward, downward, upward. And this is a characteristic difference between cellulose and starch. And this is a quick animation showing beta-glucose monomers condensing to form cellulose. The bonds in cellulose are referred to as beta-1,4 glycosidic linkages. Again, the reason being that these are beta-glucose molecules and the linkages are between carbon number one and carbon number four. And once the polymer is large enough, they do not form helical structures like collagen and starch. Rather, they remain straight and they are never branched. Instead of forming branches, parallel cellulose molecules hydrogen bond with one another and form microfibrils, which are cable-like and very strong and form the cell walls of plant cells. 
enzymes such as amylases hydrolyze the alpha-1,4 linkages in starch and in glycogen. All living things produce this enzyme. And that's, and that's why we can eat starch, because we can digest it. However, these enzymes can't hydrolyze the beta linkages of cellulose. We cannot digest cellulose. It just passes through our digestive tract. Cows have bacteria and protists in their guts that can digest cellulose. And that's why cows can eat grass and they break it down into glucose for energy. As always, a little homework for you, chitin. Have you heard about it? What is it? What kind of a polymer is it? And where is it found? You guys work on that question and I will see you in the next video. Bye.